And Lord, we are grateful. The psalmist said that who is man that thou visited him? Who is the son of man that you're mindful of him? Here we are. You kept us. You preserved us. You blessed us. We're not what we used to be. We have moved forward. It's been months of testimonies. It's been months of wonders and celebration. We give you the praise and the glory. We honor your holy name, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so let's get into the word of God today. So like you know, every October in our church, we will teach on relationship and marriage. And when we teach on it, it's a put off for some people. It's a put off because some people feel as if, number one, uh, I don't want to hear relationship teaching. That's not the phase of life I'm in. And, um, you know, I understand that. that That's not the phase of life you are in. And you're not interested in hearing things like relationship teaching. That's so true. You know, but some of the people, the reason why they don't want to hear is because they are older. Their marriage is settled. Things are going on well. And if that's where you are right now, what I want to suggest to you is this. This is what I want to suggest to you. I know that your marriage is settled. Maybe you're an older mom, woman. Maybe you're a grandmother. But you have kids, you have grandkids, you have neighbors, you have nieces, nephews, cousins. That when you hear this teaching, as you learn, you can pass on the lesson to them. So, even if you don't want to listen for yourself because you have a grip, then you want to listen to pass on to people. Now, some other people don't want to learn because they figure that, you know, I'm single, I've heard all these things said before. The tendency is that sometimes you need to hear again because there might be something you thought you heard that you didn't hear well. And other people are just deeply hurt because he kind of reminds them of all the things that didn't work and what didn't work and what did work. And you want to be like, I don't want to hear. But you must remember this. Sometimes you have to open the wound for the wound to heal. Sometimes you have to what? Open the wound for the wound to heal. Sometimes you have to open the wound for the wound to heal. So those are the kind of things, you know, we will be dealing with today. So today we're just going to delve into it and be a blessing to everyone and it's going to just be great 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 right so the first the, the first teaching it's it's relationship or marriage for me and someone says <laughs> wow that's a no-brainer that's that's for me but the truth is that things are changing so fast we've moved from a generation where everybody was excited about getting married to a generation where like why didn't they get married and people have legitimate reason to say so. Why don't you get married? Someone says, what, what, what does marriage offer me? Someone says, I will take on someone else's bill. Why do I want to do that? I will let someone break my heart. Why do I want to do that? Why do I want to get married? Why do I want to get married? Someone says, why do I want to get married? Because everything I can offer, I can get somewhere. If it's sex, I can get sex. If it's a child, I can have a child without being married. And you know, someone says, but the Bible says so. And listen to me, I, I know what to be said, but that's not my culture to be slamming Bible on people. I, I love to walk people to a place where they can see the love of God and the wisdom of God in saying what it says. I think that's way people will do it more. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Awesome. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right. So why do I want to get married? The truth is that relationship and marriage can be fun and exciting. It can be really, marriage can be so fun. I mean, you see all the stories on social media which are not true most of the time. But the truth is, in reality, marriage can be so fun, but marriage can also be so exciting, but marriage can be extremely hard. I mean, my wife is said right down there. I remember th how many hours we would, you know, I would, we would take ourselves to my pastor and we'll go through a lot of series on just trying to uncover the hardness and difficulty we're facing. So I say, wow, you and your wife? Oh, yes. The reason I'm saying so is that some men are so proud, they don't want someone else to help their marriage until the marriage eventually crashes. Just know, most of the time, strong marriages have people that support them. So if someone say, don't let a third person enter your marriage, a third person will enter, it's just be too late. But what you don't want, the balance is, then what's the balance? So, the, so one extreme say, don't discuss your marriage with anybody. That's an extreme and that's not true. The right extreme is this. One, choose who you want to discuss your marriage with. Let it be known. They can't be more than two or three. And those people you choose, you must have the reasons to choose them, is that number one, they love you. Number two, they have the strength and competence to help and support you. Number three, they will not be biased. Number four, that you trust them. The challenge I have is when someone that is single 
is as soon as I'm single about, about the relationship is going to get into. The person is not, let me say it this way, most people we ask for help are not qualified to help us. So they give us advice that ruin our lives and get into trouble, but out of love. That's a great place to clap. You know, that's a great place to clap. They give us advice that ruin us. But typically out of love. And the reason I'm saying this, this is the reason I'm, say, I'm really saying this for you to understand this. I'm really saying for you to understand this. I'm not saying don't take counsel. Hey, but the Bible says in the month of cancer, there's safety. You can't be wanting to, see, you can't be struggling with your marriage and be asking a divorcee. But if the person knows, the person, I'm not saying all divorcees are that way, but if the person knows, the person will do better. If you have a health issue, do you ask a teacher for help? No, you look for a doctor to help you. So, so, so that's the thing. Relationship and marriage can be fun, but it can be extremely hard. I'm privileged that I'm privileged that my wife and my, my wife can be that kind of person that we can open up to someone and we can discuss our issues. And the truth is that without their help, I'm never sure if I'll be married to today. And I'm saying this because because marriage can be really hard. And, and if your marriage is hard, you've just been human. Yeah. There are few people that they get it like this. You know, some people, I, I don't know how they did it. You know, I'm trying to find learn more. Like, pow, since the day we got married, I'm just, I'm telling you. Like, Pastor Nia and Pastor Fuluke, like, they never have challenges. Like, oh, oh, oh they're always a match. <laughs> Pastor Femi George and uh, uh, Sister Tayo, oh, oh, wow, oh, oh. From the day they got married, they are like a twin from heaven. I'm telling you, but, but for some of us are human. Just like choosing what to marry, it can be so difficult. Some people are so blessed, you choose one time and you marry that person. You are weird. Thank you, my brother. Most people have to go through process to get to that place. So why am I saying that to you? So people give up now. Now, so why do people give up? So let me tell you something. If you find someone giving up on their marriage, this is the reason why. If you find someone giving up on their relationship, this is the reason why. People give up on their relationship and marriage when they have experienced repeated disappointments. It could mean that their emotional needs are not met. It could mean that they don't feel seen or heard, and it's repeated. And most of the time, they can't see a head way out. And now they've gotten to a place where they are emotionally burnt out. What does emotional burnout look like? What does emotional burnout look like? So when people watch, the, I'm saying this because it's very powerful. When people give up on their marriages, when they give up on their relationship, the reason why is that they just can't take it again. I will talk to the single people first. So single single people, you will hear things like, "Relationship is not for me." Deep down with your heart, you know you're lying. Deep down, you know you want love. You want someone to hold you. You want someone to stand on you. You want someone to, you know. Yes or no? Yes. You want it. But why are you lying to yourself? Because it's better to have no expectation than disappointed what expectation. So you lie to yourself and convince yourself, I don't want this. Then six months after we see you dating, I'm like, what happened to you? Why did you say you don't want it? The reason why you say you don't want it is simple. This is the reason why. The reason why you say you don't want it is because somewhere you've gone to repeat it. And this is what it looks like. Come, sir. Come, sir. Come help us here. Just stand over here. Yeah. I want to show what it means to be bumped out. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Burn out is like this, this, this match stick. It keeps burning. It becomes burnt out. Yeah. And the whole thing, this is not only burnt out, the whole thing is burnt out yeah. and can't burn again. And the reason why your heart can't burn again is that your heart has been burnt out. Yeah. You know, I'm telling you, in marriage, you see, it's falling off. In marriage, burnt out. You know, things have happened between your husband and the wife and you're just exhausted. Some of you are single, but you're burnt out because things have happened not within your marriage. Even 
around you to visit this girl and this guy and you're burnt out completely and this is what i want to do today i'm going to say instead of you to be burnt out that way can we give you something bigger so that this can sustain you and instead of you burning out here you can have something to hold for a long time hallelujah let me tell you two things that will happen to you number one all of you that are married you will find a reason to work on your marriage and get it better yeah if, if, if you and, and some of you have settled and you know something my wife told me to, in the season of marriage my wife said that, you know what i've just stopped trying and because i was just being not that nice great person to love I said, because I do all these things and I'm not getting it. He said, I've just stopped trying. And that's what happens when you're burnt out. You lose interest. <laughs> like, I can't come and kill myself. For, formerly, you used to surprise her and do all of those things. Now, you don't bother me again because, you see, if you want to be happy, be happy. If you're not happy, mm-hmm. So, once you're burnt out, you lose interest. You lose interest in making your marriage work. You lose, so your friend says, hey, hey, sh- you know, I'm, I'm Shaniqua. Let's go out. And you're like, mm-hmm. You use your makeup. You may meet somebody. I don't want to meet anybody. Because you're burnt out. And many of you are in that state, but you never put a word to it. What you're going through is you're burnt out. The second thing, so when you're burnt out, you lack interest. The second thing that happens is you begin to have all these negative images. All these what? Negative images. So, you see your wife, you come home, and your wife this has this nice perfume things and lingerie dog, like this nightwear, and hacks and cooks food, and when he cooks it, you're like, hmm, she wants money. <laughs> Be- because once you're born that you're negative, and you see everything from the perspective of what negativity. You see your wife talk to the pastor, you say, hey, she has gone to report me. You see your husband come home, and your husband just bought you a gift, you say, ah, he wants sex. He has done something wrong. He's not going for something. And the reason why is that you've just totally become negative. The question is, but this was not who you were when you, when you started. How can we now give negative meaning to very great things? The reason why is that you're burnt out. The third sign that you're burnt out is this, and you have a broken heart. There's just a heart that is fragile, that is broken, that finds it very difficult to love again. So before, so let's read Psalm chapter 11, verse 3. And you know, and if you're here, and you say, Pastor Bolaji, the truth is that I do not want to get married. I'm done with dating. I'm done with marriage. I'm done with all those things. I agree with you. At least to a limit. I understand. Maybe the word is not agree. I understand you. Because when you see the reasons why people don't want to get married, it makes sense. Why should I get married when I can have sex and not... People married to have sex. I don't have to marry to get sex now. Can we talk tonight? People married to have children. I don't have children to have. I don't have to marry to have children. Why exactly? You know, because for me, it's like did God punish us with marriage? Did God say, mm, "Human race, how do I punish you?" In fact, someone said to me one time, "Marriage is necessary evil." And I understand what he said. He said because a lot of people are not happy in their marriage. You, you, know, say, oh, you know, Christians know how to be so hypocritical. How many of you came from families where your, where your parents' marriage were happy? At the most, they tolerated themselves. Most of them fought to and nail. <laughs> so, people, you know, rational people go like, this doesn't make sense. Why should I be married? 50% of all marriages end up in divorce. Why do I want to do a business that failure rate is 50 percent? Makes sense to me. Maybe I should not marry. So if you're here and say you should not marry, I don't understand. Because nobody wants to do something and fail and feel as if you're a failure. Do you know how much women have suffered because of a divorce and they feel they're a failure? And how much men have suffered because of a divorce because they feel as if they're failures? So maybe you're not, you know, maybe you think you don't want to marry or you are in a marriage and you want to leave because you feel as if the odds are against me. Look at how divorce rate is. I understand, I understand where you are. You know, maybe the reason why you, want, you don't believe in marriage is this. Because you believe that I can have everything in marriage without getting married. I want an open relationship. I understand that also. Because it doesn't make sense. If you eat by every day, sometimes you want something else. What? You want 
lamb though? You want vegetable? You want rice? How come you choose one person and sleep with one person every day of your life? Why? When you can have Laquida, Latana, Letusha, you know, why? You can have Jacob, you can have Rachel, you can have Esau, you can have Victor. Why choose one person? It makes sense. Does it not make sense? You know it makes sense, I'm not just saying it. <laughs> and as soon as something, you know, what I'm contractual sex is like, oh, like, oh, thank you. Are you done? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But, <laughs> oh, wow. But when you're married to someone, you can't just have sex that way. You have to prim, you have to prep. Not just prep. You have to prep. Are you home? Is Jerusalem open today? <laughs> Glory to God. So why don't people believe in marriage and want to get married? The first reason that the first reason is bad experiences. Someone said, why can't you have had bad see with how people have broken your heart? Do you have liver to date again? to you during social media and the reason we don't want to get married is all this bad bad things have happened and like i'm not going to become another bad example of this thing so people don't want to get married because of bad experiences either their own experience or some extra experience some of you saw the way your parents handled their marriage and how it affected you and you're like i am not going to be married and that makes sense some of you, it's a bad experience you had. Dated this guy all to find out I'm fake. What do you call it? Oh, wow. You see, just find it's a screensaver. It's not a real thing. And some people just want to be like, see, <laughs> why do I want to commit to get benefit I can get without committing? I can get sex, why do I want to commit for that? I can get children, why do I want to commit? So, a lot of people in our generation are settling to be single moms and single dads. Have you heard that before? Oh, you can just pretend as if you know what I'm talking about. I'm like, <laughs> I just, I just, I'll just have a child. Though. I'll just have a child. I'm okay. I'll look for a very handsome man to get me pregnant. I'll look for a very beautiful girl to get a, give me a child. And the reason why is that people are like, this is my thing is so difficult. But why do you want to engage in it? I mean, it kind of makes sense. But see what the Bible says, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3. And I'll begin to talk about just perspective. Proverbs 11, verse 3. See, the Bible says, And if the foundations were destroyed, what can the righteous do? With all these things you're wondering, so there are foundations when it comes to marriage and relationship. And during this month, all the single people, this might be the best thing you will hear that will prepare you for marriage. All the right people, this was what is going to turn your marriage around. And I'm just praying that God will grant us a grace to be able to, to just really say what needs to be said. Who? All these reasons why people don't get married. Can I tell you that it boils down to two reasons? It boils down to two reasons why people don't want to get married. Why people don't want to say, I will never date again. I'll, I'll never marry again. I'll, I'll just work out of my marriage. It boils down to two reasons. One is fear. Someone says, the divorce rate, you're afraid it will happen to you. Someone says, all this I've had bad experience, I've had bad experience, you're afraid this will happen to you. So most of us, you really want it, but you're afraid. And the second category of people is those that are self-centered. It's I'm just afraid of someone not being able to meet someone's expectation. What are you saying? So you have you, you know you'll meet ex, you, you know they will meet your expectation, but you're really afraid they will not meet the expectation. The thing about fear is that fear has torment. So the reason why you go through that Relationship and marital frustration is a torment of fear. First John chapter 4 in verse 18. Oh, glory to God. First John chapter 4 in verse 18. First John chapter 4 verse 18. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, that hallelujah is lame. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says there is no fear in love. It says if you are not the love of God for your life. He said, but perfect love set off here. So, when you're really afraid, and you say, I, why are you not dating? I don't want someone to break my heart. You don't have, you don't have f 
you have, you have no revelation of God's love for you. He said, why? He said, because if you really understand God's love for you, perfect love. Death, fear. So the question, hey, the question is, so why does God want us to get married? That's very big question. Why, why, why on the F? If marriage is tough, first of all, not every tough thing is bad. Praise the Lord. And not every easy thing is good. Tough bearing is tough. But it's not bad. Education is tough. But you went to school. So the fact that marriage could be is not, and the, the thing about hard work is this the more you work at something that is hard, the easier it becomes for you. Glory to God. So, wh wh why? And this will blow you. Did, listen, everybody, sit up, sit up, sit up. Sit, 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 look at the message. This is going to blow your mind. Let me tell you about this is going to blow your mind. mind. From, from God's word. Genesis chapter 2 verse 20. Why does God want us to be married? Genesis chapter 2 verse 20. There are five reasons I've done, done, done to. I hope I can go deeper right now. Genesis chapter 2 verse 20. Five reasons why God wants us to just soak into my mind. The Bible says, And I gave all names to the animals of the fowl of the air and to every beast. The Bible says, God brought others after them and said, Hey, I'm a fowl. Help me. I don't know what is suitable for him. Hey, the way God designed, for example, now, I have, I have this, see, I have this, let me use these two gadgets. This uses battery. Let me show you the battery area. You may not never know this, except in the microphone. So somewhere here, there are battery uses. And the batteries are not rechargeable. They are replaceable. My phone also uses a battery, but I cannot open it the way it is right now. But for me to use my phone, I need to charge my phone. The way you design something is very important because you know how you designed it. When God made man, when man, when Bible says, and Adam did not find any meat suitable, it was not a mistake. That was his design. Adam was designed for support. Adam was created for support. One of the reasons why God wants to be in a committed relationship like marriage one of the purpose of marriage, or traditionally call it companionship, one of the purpose of marriage is support. What does support look like? Let me define support to you. Support, what does support look like? This is very powerful. Support is not something you do for someone. It's how you show them that you love them. That's what marriage is. It's how you show them you love them. What is support? Support is having someone that is there for you during the downtime and doing what? The uptime. And, and God knows you will need support. Yes. God knows that. And God says, the way I plan to give you support in a very unique way is through marriage, through this committed relationship. And let me say something to you. Everybody look at me one minute. Just, everybody look, look up here, please. Look up here. If you want to be very honest, when you see that one dream of your future, your dream of a future where you have a partner, that, submit, that supports you. That's one of the biggest dreams you have of a partner that supports you. Someone that looks at you and says, baby, you want to start the business? Here's the cash. Let's sit on the table and work out this. That support. And everybody wants that. That's not too much to ask for. And if you're married here, you need to look at your marriage and say, based on this issue of support, am I a supporting husband? Or am I a supporting, supporting wife? Or I'm so disconnected from what my partner does. Then, oh wow, oh my, will you, will you take it? You can be a supporting husband and a supporting wife. But may not know how to receive support because oh wow <laughs> will you receive it yes, sir. you are too strong to be helped can i talk yes, sir. single mothers take notes firstborns take notes firstborn girls take notes 
You are too used to carrying load. You are too used to carrying load. When someone comes along your life, it's just difficult for you to help them, for them to help you to carry load because you are a load carrier. And you wonder, and, and this is the thing about marriage, the way, because you're designed to support and to receive support, you're, everyone will find it difficult to be in a relationship where it's difficult to give support that is not received. So you'll find yourself retracting over time again. So you'll say they're not supporting me, but the truth is this, you are not allowing yourself to be supported. It's like a device. They say, this device does not accept that format. And, and all of you that married can we be brutally honest that the way God designed marriage is for you to support one another why are we competing against one another the other day my wife was telling me pastor was telling me about this person that we know and once a husband buys a Range Rover she buys a Range Rover because we have to go at the same pace. It's not a competition. It's a complementation. Support. And that's why most of the time in marriage, you pick someone that's not as strong as you are in certain areas. You know, when I met my wife, my dressing was horrible. I, I would get like brown shoes, pink trousers yellow shirts because in my mind I thought that the brighter like I thought that was creative like the the brighter we was like the more you stand out I didn't know I was looking like a traffic lights <laughs> then the first gift my wife gave me when we were dating was about five or seven shirts and she told me those shirts this is how she told me these are the shirts and this is how you combine them you know what support is Praise God. You know, you know what support is? Support is knowing you're not good at this. And I'm able to support you there. And to be honest, that's what everyone wants. To know that your wife is not good in prayer. But you're able to support her there. I know you will say that, well, I don't want marriage, but you want support. The reason why you think you don't want it again is because you've convinced yourself you don't need support, but you know you need support. The reason why is that when you have people that support you, one person, you finally have someone to laugh with. And you know some of our laughter. Laughter is boring when you laugh alone and you don't share. Have you seen when you have a baby, who you call? You don't call everybody. Everybody will know you have a baby. The first three people you call are those so connected to you that their joy becomes your joy. That their tears becomes your tears. That they need to know. And that's why God dreamt of this thing called marriage and relationship that you will come into a union with someone that their joy becomes your joy. Your sorrow becomes their sorrow. They literally carry the burden with you. And, and, and you know why this talks to single people let me talk to married people let me talk to single people single people the problem is this the material you choose determines the clothes you want to make hallelujah you can't use cotton material cotton you know cotton drip material and say I want to make a suit no you can't use juice material and say I want to make a top you can't use apoche and say I want to make a shirt or make a suit the problem with single people is this marriage you want support look for husband material that has support look for wife material that has support but most people will not do that you know what they will do they will choose husband material that has lexus and want to change him to make support clothes listen you already have your lexus you don't get support all you get is what lexus I'm telling you, that's why sometimes, sometimes when I see how people are looking for husband or wife to marry, I'm like, is that all? Or in front of the, I pass if you see his car, car. 
is that car that used to drive you away because you think that the fact that it's rich means it's supportive you can be rich and not supportive you can be poor and be very supportive it's not about having it's about sharing because some people have a lot and do not share i mean they are married men that have never given their in-laws anything what kind of man are you so ladies or guys when you're looking for someone you know you date this guy has he ever sat down with you before and just asked about your career and all of those things and worked out some things with you and you date this girl has he ever asked you oh wow you, you wanted to pay like oh i don't have cash i'm like you don't have cash that's unlike you um it, can i sit down and talk you be like that's unlike you there's something going on in your finances well i have one million saved somewhere else you know, I don't know if you can use it for time being and return it when you can. <laughs> support. That's what support looks like. See, I'm only telling you that it's because when you say you can't find someone, or your marriage is not working, it's what because most of us have settled for just anyhow marriage. But we can begin to believe for what? Supportive marriage. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 20, he says, and God looked for helpmate. The second thing which I want to talk about today, and I will close with, is verse 25. I, I've jumped from verse 21, 22, 23, 24, but we'll come back to it in the future, maybe on Wednesday or next Sunday. It's verse 25. Let's read this scripture together and only the women read with a loud voice. Want to go? Huh? Why did God design marriage? Because the reason why God designed marriage is because God designed us for vulnerability. What is vulnerability? Is expressed in that verse. Is the vulnerable means to be able to be open and not what? ashamed it, it may be difficult to be open with your classmates it may be difficult to open with your friends but marriage is a place where we do not we don't act we are not actors in marriage it's a place where we are naked the word is naked in marriage there is no there is no covering there's no covering there, there's no covering like this there's no covering like this so, because some of you this is how you're, you're married you're covering yourself you're covering yourself there's no covering like this there's no, it's about being naked and not ashamed her question is that are you naked or you're covering yourself are you naked Oh, you're covering. And, and the reason why I'm saying so is this, and this one's very far, powerful. This is why this is powerful. Everybody loves a place where you're vulnerable. Everybody loves a place where you're vulnerable. Where you can sit down and you forget who you are and just tell the girl or tell your wife, I feel as if I failed. I see if I see if I have no future. And she can look at you and be like, the reason why I know you've not failed is because I, I did not marry a failure. I've looked at you one million times and there's no trace of that in you. And with tears in her eyes, it says, even if it takes my blood, I will support you to get to your dreams. That is vulnerability. What is vulnerability? Vulnerability is being authentic being authentic what is vulnerability see let me define vulnerability for you are you ready to write vulnerability is I'm imperfect yet I'm worthy of love and belonging like I know there are things that are imperfect about me but I'm still worthy of someone's love I'm still worthy of what? belonging so vulnerability knows I'm imperfect and I'm not saying say I'm not saying for you to stay in your imperfect state I'm saying that I can I will accept you and love you in that state why I'm working with you to get what 
better. So let me give a good example. Maybe you had terrible sexual experience when you were young. Maybe at seven, some people were raping you. Maybe your stepdad. And for some reason, you find sex very uncomfortable. Instead of you pretending in marriage and saying, Hoo -ya, ha, 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 and just playing games. But your husband notices you're always running around when it comes to faith. You will play sleep. You will say, my hair. You say, I'm tired. You say, it's cooked. You say, children. But meanwhile, there's something. But you can't tell him. But I believe you just say, honey, there's something I've not told you. I really do not like sex. And the reason why is that it's not about you. When I was seven, one, two, three, four, five things haven't happened to me. And it just messed up with my mind. It's creating a place where you're safe. And your husband will say, you know what? I love you the way you are. While I'm committed to helping you get to where you need to be. I love you the way you are. But I love you too much to leave you the way you are. I'm going to bring you into a place of what? Sexual and emotional healing. That's vulnerability. And that's what we want. That's what we want. Someone that we can be open to. You know, a lot of you, one time, I was laughing at someone because he wanted to see his girlfriend at 11 p.m. And the girlfriend said she had to use makeup to come and see him. I said, what the heaven is going on here? Don't you understand? If you have black patches, you have mums, she needs to see. Because you can't be acting. How long will you act in a marriage for? And that's what happened. Because you're not really generous. That's the truth. Bio, you're not generous. Victor, Uche, you're not that generous. You were just using all the gifts to attract her. You need to just let her know that, you know what? I, you, know, you know, I'm not that generous. It's something I should work on, but this way I am. Because now that you're married, you stop doing the gift. And you're like, oh, wow, you've changed. You didn't change. You just returned to status quo. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Are you here? Yes, sir. Vulnerability. Some of you, and, and, and Trevor, bring the chairs. Some of you bring the chairs quickly. And, and what people have mastered the relationship. And this is why I'm not vulnerable in relationship because many of you are trained to expect a lot from people. I don't want you to have parents that have high expectation. So, bring, carry the chair, carry the chair, carry the chair. So, two of you come to your marriage, come, come, come. Let's say this is a man and woman. Come into the marriage. Oh yeah, put the chair on each other's head. Find a way to put on each other's head. You will get it. Yeah, exactly. So that's what's the, make sure you hold it to the other person. Don't hold for the other person. Hold the one. No, no, no. Hold your own chair. Hold this one. Exactly. Make sure. So what you have in marriage is this. Everybody comes with expectation. Oh yeah. Come and carry, carry my expectation. Be this, be that. And this is the truth. You, nobody, you can't force someone to change. People will change by themselves. This is it. This is marriage. You should be this. You should be that. You should be this. You should be that. The thing is that you are the one that will determine what you should be. And that's it. You can put it down. Vulnerability. You know what it means to be vulnerable? Your husband can come home one day or your friends can come home one day and say, oh wow, babe, I just did a deal. I made one million dollars. And there's no emergency expense that comes up after one week. Because the reason why is that those are things that kill what? Vulnerability. Because is it a million dollars and instantly be like, it's the next question. Babe, I've been trying to tell you things, but I wait for the perfect time. You know, there's this gold that I saw in Dubai that I want to go and grab. So the thing is that I don't even need much. I don't need much. All I need is just 80 million. Not much. Because after all, he has told you he made what? One million dollars. I want to ask you, is that not what you really want? That's what you when you when you saw your parents' relationship that you admired. That's what you loved about it. When you when, when you saw marriages you didn't like, that's what you hated. This is the reason why you say you never love again. Because you were saying, is it possible to have a relationship where I'm this vulnerable? 
and someone said yes that's what i want but the thing is that for you to express vulnerability you have to become vulnerable most of us are not vulnerable most of us are hiding so we do do me i do you so all of a sudden you are setting miss you are setting traps for him to see his phone you are setting traps for him to do because you are setting traps for her hoping that she will make a mistake and you will not catch her you see you saw his car down the road though i said mm. so where are you coming from because you are hoping he will not mention that he stopped somewhere and you cannot say hmm victor so you're still lying to me vulnerability vulnerability what is vulnerability let me read to you so what we're reading this look look at what vulnerability is it says i'm imperfect yet and, and let me tell you something all of us that hide because we feel as if our imperfect makes us unworthy of love i'm telling you sometimes you know the other day i was speaking to a girl and it was telling me our roommates you know will watch a lot of sex because they are guys want to they are practicing this i said well, if they practice for themselves, yeah, but is that what they are? The truth is vulnerable. Because vulnerable is who I am. Can I be honest with you? Caring guys sometimes don't have six pack. All we have to show is pot belly. Can you tap it? Let me see. Tap it. Let me see. All we have to show is what pot belly. Vulnerability is an I accept you the way we are. Not that after everything, huh? You are eating again, no? Show remember your belly. You are eating again, no? Show remember your belly. Ha! Huh? If you are not too big like this, I'll have done this. If you're not too big like this, I'll have done this. That's not for the abilities that I love what you are on your way to becoming what you need to become. Praise God. For the abilities by opening them and saying, you know what? I can cook, but I'm not so great in cooking. Yeah, I'm not so great in cooking. I go like, I understand that. But where are you on this? Are you willing to learn? Oh yeah, I'm willing to learn. He said, I, I love where you are. So one, once in a while you'll bump the indomie, but I love it. <laughs> because the worst one is the one that will go and carry food to pretend as if she's cooking. And I say, oh, I've been in the kitchen all day, all day. Meanwhile, kitchen, nothing. It's Mama this that she has supplied the food. You know, have you not seen people that pretend they can cook and they can't cook water? What is wrong? Because the thing, what I'm saying is that how long will you act for? Guys, stop acting as if you are richer than what you are. Because all these things they keep asking you is because of you, you give them the impression that you have a lot of money. So the girl says, and my next birthday, iPhone 15, Singapore, this. Because you give her, because all the time you are bringing out all of these things. The reason why is that eventually she will fall in love with your money and not with you. What is vulnerability? But because as a man, you've, they've taught you that it's money they want. No, is that I'm imperfect. Hey, I'm just a young guy moving on in life and what marriage is meant to be is to build that union because if you get vulnerable too many people they'll use against you so marriage builds one person that you can lean into and become vulnerable are we working at it or are we destroying it this is deep single people when you seek look for someone to marry did you consider vulnerability because you know what vulnerability is not attractive you need to know vulnerability is what it's not attractive what is attractive what is scarce and what has form shape and brand <laughs> hey babe what's up okay i'll come over just get ready i'm downstairs picking you up but you don't want to hear my car spot on the road because you're like hey which kind of boyfriend is this hey the car is falling on the road 
So even the guy can't tell you that my car spoiled on the road because they know that they have to form for you to, for them to impress you. You don't have to form. Stop putting pressure on them and stop putting pressure on yourself. Praise God. Question. Three questions for you. What do you want in a relationship? Do you want a social media relationship where it looks perfect but it's imperfect? Or do you want a relationship where it looks imperfect but it's very perfect? Because it doesn't look perfect. You know, the girl is not that slim, this, slim, that, slim, this, slim, that. You know, no, 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 no. She has not done BBL, but she's vulnerable. You didn't know I was coming there. She we were together this month. I'm telling you, invest where it matters. Bomb, bomb, and the other one does not bring us band. <laughs> it can attract husband. What sustains husband is something else. Do a survey. Most people that do it, are they married? I'm going to go before they beat me in this church. <laughs> I'm not saying, see, I'm not saying that it's a sin, but I'm only saying the attention is so wrong. Instead of you traveling to Turkey to do BBL, work on your vulnerability. It's, you don't understand, men love people that, that are just vulnerable. Not stupid. That's extreme. Vulnerable. There's something that attracts you. When a woman is too strong, it's very repelling. Except for a man that is weak. That's right. What's Praise God. Can we close? I want to ask you. I understand you don't want to get married. But you want to. But this is what you want. But the reason why you, 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 you've walked away is because you are afraid that can I ever have this? But you can. What marriage? Give me the, give me the Lego. What's trimmer? Do you have it? What, what marriage is this? See, God doesn't say this is your marriage. God, this is what God gives you for marriage. Come, 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 come. Don't, don't bring any of that. Just bring that. This is what God gives you. Just bring the bag. That's fine. Just give me the bag. In marriage, God just gives you like a Lego like this and say, build whatever you want. You want a vulnerable marriage? Build it. Build whatever you want. That's what it is. Build it. You want a supportive marriage? Build it. What God gives you are raw materials. So, when you're picking your husband, pick the right raw material. When you're picking your wife, pick the right raw material. If you're married, you already have a bag. Use your raw material. Praise God. Use your raw material. Hmm? Use your raw material. Use your raw material. Eh? Use your raw material. Give me a good bit. Drum guy. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Let's stand up and pray.